Hi everyone, my name is Alvin and I'm part of the Degate team. I'm here today to bring you a brief product blueprint of Degate in the coming months. Degate is a decentralized exchange built on Ethereum layer 2 with innovative technologies that will make uh, trading faster, cheaper and better. And our aim is to democratize value exchange. So today we're going to give you a brief update on the product roadmap. First, a little bit of an overview. One of the major developments in the past few months is um, our focus on limit orders in decentralized exchanges in the next generation. To take to borrow a term, let there be limit orders. Previously, on decentralized exchanges, limit orders have been quite tough to implement and have been not very popular because of cost issues, because of, of the, the many issues and bringing limit orders on chain. So the gate aims to focus on limit orders and solve the problem such that users uh, can place limit orders on the Degate exchange. Now a bit of background to take us through. Ethereum layer one, we're all familiar with this if you're watching this video, about 1.5 million transactions a day on Ethereum. The, the Ethereum blockchain, and that's about 17 transactions a second, which is not enough given the current usage that we need today, and it's a major topic of discussion. So obviously, Ethereum layer 2 scaling solutions, such as optimistic rollups, and so on and so forth, we're looking at approximately 100x in terms of the transaction volume, the throughput volume. So we're looking at about 1,700 transactions. So theoretically, building decentralized exchange or any dApp on layer 2 is uh, will lead to much faster transactions or much better transactions, faster, cheaper transactions. Now let's look at the transaction costs. Assuming the gas price of 50 GWE and ETH price of 3,400 US dollars and per transaction gas usage of 66,000, we're looking at about $11 US per transaction on Ethereum layer one. Whereas in Ethereum layer two, theoretically, you can imagine one would say that it will be a hundred times cheaper. So maybe one 10 cents. But actually we imagine that because supply creates its own demand this number will be closer to $1, $1 per transaction. As supply increases, more and more users come in and leading to an increase, increase in congestion and about a $1.1, $1 cost in transactions on layer two for each transaction. So you can imagine that in this scenario, if you were to create a DEX in this scenario on purely on layer two, there will still be a quite a significant cost to transact on layer two about we envision about $1, which is um, not huge, but it's a significant cost. So our conclusion and why we're focusing our new innovations uh, on is um, to place and cancel orders off chain and only to settle orders on chain on layer two. So in this way, we will, e we will significantly reduce costs even from our projected $1. So this is just a schema of the logic behind why we're pursuing placing can and canceling orders off chain. I'll talk a bit more about this later in the video. A brief background on the user types that we're targeting. On the market makers front, we have intent people who want to make money via market making. This includes uh, retail market makers uh, who are very well served in, under the traditional and the current AMM or automated market making process, as well as pro market makers who want to trade using API trading bots. So this is uh, one part of a, a very crucial part of the ecosystem for any for the exchanges. On the trader front, there's makers and there's takers. The intention is to convert token A to token B, and there's a taker on the other hand to effect this transaction. All these users are very important. So when designing a decentralized exchange, we want to have four features that we feel are very important to make from first principles to make a great exchange, uh, decentralized exchange. First, instantly place and cancel orders. Second, even better, place and cancel orders for free. Third, this is um, something that we are standing to, that we're designing into the system. It's 100% free for makers in trading fee and gas fee. And fourth is the direct trade for taker, no deposit needed. Only when the transaction goes through, then you have to pay from your wallet for the transaction, but you don't have to deposit USDC or whatever into the system to effect this trade. So all this together makes for much a good use that experience for the makers and takers, fast and cheap. How are we going to make this happen? This sounds great in theory, but how are we going to make it happen? I want to go into a bit of the architecture of the, the entire system. At the very top layer, you can see here the smart contract layer. The middle layer, what we call our match node, understanding 
the match node is key to understanding this architecture. And at the bottom, there's one layer called the UI layer. Now, in the smart contract layer, we're going to have a smart contract for order book trading and a smart contract for AMMs. So theoretically, these are two separate systems. The smart contract for order book trading will allow people to place orders, makers to sell and buyers to buy tokens. And this layer is connected to the AMM or automated market layer through what we have termed a superconduct channel. Essentially, we will provide, we will provide Right. Actually, these are, even though these are two separate systems, we envision that we will provide the tools for bots and for humans, arbitragers, to arbitrage the differences in price such that there's equilibrium between the two, or very close to equilibrium between the two in terms of prices. And in this sense, we can think of it as one coherent system, this order book trading and the AMM system. This is the design of the architecture that we're planning. On the top, of course, we have margin trading, um, which is again a separate system, um, but we might be thinking about sourcing it to a third party such as Compound. So at the smart contract layer, conceptually, we have all these functions that we are building into the architecture, or we are we have plans to put in the architecture, focusing on audible trading first. At the match node layer, this is what we see in the middle. Conceptually, what we're using ZK proofs or zero knowledge proofs, what we are doing is um, allowing for match nodes, essentially a layer three built on top of layer two, settle uh, trades. I mean, don't, not to settle trades, to place and place orders on the match node layer only when an order is about to be settled, then it's settled on chain. So this greatly reduces the cost of transaction, and people and makers and takers have to sign their transactions in order to for these transactions to be settled. Essentially, we're building another layer three, so-called, on top of the layer two of um, Optimus rollups, CK rollups, such that we make it even cheaper and faster to transact. Uh, using order books. And of course, there's a layer at the bottom, the, the UI layer. So essentially, if you're a key opinion leader or KOL, you're an influencer, you can use the UI layer to create your own UI using the technology of the architecture of the gate to create your own uh, platform and front facing such that you can bring liquidity, bring um, makers and take onto your own platform. And so this there's also incentives to do this for the UI layer. So this is how we envision the architecture. And this is in fact the, the meat of our thinking and design and uh, the bulk of our efforts for the next few months. Here, I want to go a bit deeper into the simplified illustration of Audible architecture. At the top, we have, which is how we're going to make it essentially fast and cheap. Layer one, we're all familiar with, which is layer two. We are focusing on, layer two is of course, much faster and cheaper. And things like, we're focusing on Optimus rollups and, and ZK rollups. And we're building on top of that our match node uh, layer three, which um, allows makers and takers to place orders and sign their sign their orders. And only when the orders are settled, when there's a match, then we place to settle the order on layer two. So in this way, we envision that it'd be even there are some interesting connotations and implementa implementations of this, which for this design, which are meant to make the user experience smooth and good for makers and takers. So some of the features that arise from this architecture, I'll talk about a few. One is that for we in, we will we plan to make it free for makers. So makers don't have to pay a trading fee. They don't have to pay a gas fee. They don't have to pay a, a fee to place an order to sell. Takers are the ones that pay in this system. Um, and by design. So this will bring a lot of makers onto the uh, onto the platform. Quick response. So because of the design of the match nodes and the API trading that can be provided by match nodes, there'll be very quick response. Also, can imagine that um, there'll be there might be many, many servers which are running the match nodes, which means that essentially we can replicate or or be almost as fast or as fast as any centralized exchange and replicate that experience that you're used to on your favorite centralized exchange in terms of fast, quick, relatively cheap trading. Open protocol, anyone can implement a match node without permission. And finally, we want to encourage large orders. Large limit orders are filled first when the ask price is the same. So in this sense, um, you can imagine we don't want to encourage too many very small orders. Uh, so larger order to sell will be prioritized. This way, takers who are paying for the gas will benefit from a reduction in gas fees. So these are some of the features that we envision to and some of the trade-offs that we that we um, made, made possible by the match node technology such that be able to provide a smooth order book trading experience. So how is this going to look for makers and takers of, sorry, for from the perspective of the user, 
for market orders and for limit orders. We talked about architecture, we talked about the features, the order book, and now let's, talk, let's go a bit deeper into the user experience. First, if I'm a user, you open a gate within a wallet and you move the token that you want to trade from layer one to layer two. And then you approve it, you ask you to approve on layer two. If you're placing a market order, you place it, uh, it's very similar to existing systems, and then you settle it on layer two. If you are placing a limit order, you deposit into the gate smart contract on layer two, then you place a limit order. The limit order shows in the order book. And finally, if it goes through, filled and settled on layer two. We've talked about, now this, sounds all, this all sounds great in the, in the architecture design and the user experience, essentially faster and cheaper, better, yet secure. But what are the limitations of such UX? The implications logically of our design is that um, there will be some trade-offs. Firstly, there's a, most importantly, there's a minimum requirement of order size due to the risk of dust order attacks. A limit order must come with minimum size requirement. Likely, we envision about $100 to $500. You can imagine a system where a taker places a um, $100 order to buy, buy a token. And a dust order attack happens, a dusting order attack happens where there's a maker selling 10,000 of um, one cent of their, their token. Now this will lead to a catastrophic, this will lead to huge problems in terms of, of gas usage and gas fees. So we probably place a limitation on the minimum size requirement when interacting with all the book trading. And this is to prevent dust order attacks. Otherwise the system would not work. So we talked about the architecture, we talked about the user experience, we talked about the design features and the, the limitations. How are we going to bring the gate to the market? Putting aside marketing strategies, let's talk a bit about strategies by design in the product. First of all, there's like liquidity mining for order books. DG tokens are only awarded to those makers whose limit orders are filled on a pro-rata basis. So this will incentivize people to bring their, their limit orders closer to um, the theoretical market price. And those makers who do this will get rewarded with DG tokens. For liquidity mining for AMM, this is industry standard liquidity mining for DG token for liquidity providers. So this is again, pretty similar to other AMMs in the industry. Finally, there we will be a referral program for KOLs and users or influencers and user interfaces by wallet providers and other UI providers. They're provided with trading fee rebates, as well as the DG token in the initial bootstrapping phase. This will help to, these are just three of the strategies built into the product and that will help us to incentivize liquidity, incentivize propagation of the DG marketplace, the DG exchange. So today we've talked a bit about all of the features that we are working on, how to work on for the gate. And we hope that this gives you a brief introduction to what the gate exchange will look like and hope that you will continue to like and support us. If you are following the gate, please remember to subscribe to this channel as we provide you with continuous product updates and occasional fun activities on our YouTube channel. Until next time, I'll see you again. If you have any questions, please do leave them in the comment section below. Thank you.